Hey everybody and welcome to my Morphe's Law First Impressions video. Let's jump right into it with a little history. Morphe's Law, developed by Cosmoscope, was first announced for the Nintendo Switch in the August 2017 Nindies Showcase, but the FAQ section on their website reveals that they had a prototype running over two years before the game's release. This game went a while without getting any updates to its development or a release date, even going completely unmentioned in Nintendo's Spring 2018 Nindies Showcase. But the team made a tweet the same day explaining that they were putting all of their effort into finishing the game. Five months later, on August 20th, the game released with very little warning, only a few vague tweets that happened in the days leading up to its release. After loading into my first few matches, I was very disappointed. There was terrible lag that tossed my character and enemies all around the maps, especially when trying to jump and use the game's butt boost feature, which basically acts as a jetpack that is installed into your character's butt. The game has some audio issues which caused me to have to change my TV volume in reaction to the game's sound effects infinitely looping upon death, and at the start of matches there would sometimes be a random really loud noise. I even had a match start with only 3 players, resulting in an uninteresting 2 vs 1 game. These issues gave me a very bad first impression, but something happened that completely changed my mind. I tried an offline match with bots. It is during these matches that one can get a glimpse at this game's true potential. When matches are running smoothly and the bots are using a diverse mixture of the available weapons, abilities, and customization options, the game comes to life and becomes a frantic and fun hero shooter like Team Fortress 2, Overwatch, or Paladins. Choosing your weapon and ability loadout is like choosing your class or hero in the other shooters I mentioned, but in this game, your loadout is fully customizable. There are secondary weapons which can give you more damage options like the rocket launcher, healing like the slippery healing goo, or utility like the foam obstacle maker. There are also abilities that can make a halo bubble shield, heal all teammates close to you, or turn you into a bowling ball of doom. After seeing the variety of loadouts in those bot matches, I saw what this game is actually trying to be. A team-based shooter with a casual quirky tone, and most importantly, their big twist, mass mechanics. Shooting at enemies causes you to steal mass from the body part on the enemy that you hit. Each body part has a different perk associated with it that gets stronger as you steal more mass for that body part. The downside being that the more perks or mass you collect, the easier of a target you become for your enemies. The game plays with this mechanic in a variety of ways like cutting off certain paths when you're too big or putting objectives in high up spots that you can only reach by stealing leg mass for a big jump. It all just adds even more layers to the game. I know that a lot of people's first impressions are going to be tainted by the wonky mess that is the games online, but I felt the need to make this video so that people could see what this game is meant to be. I still wouldn't tell anybody to buy this game if they just wanted to play online matches with real opponents until the network issues get resolved, but personally, I'm enjoying myself just playing against the bots and would recommend the game right now to anyone interested in that experience. The game's motion controls are pretty much the same as Splatoon 2's, so that's a big plus. I think Splatoon's motion controls are the best in any console shooter I've ever played and I dropped that Halo Bubble Shield reference earlier so you know that I've been playing shooters with a controller for a while. There's a pretty robust character customization menu too which I have already had a lot of fun with and I can see others getting very creative with the options they give you. The game's visuals, from the maps to the characters to the menus, all work together with the music and sound design to create a tone derived from Mexican culture and the Dia de los Muertos holiday. While the game isn't perfect, it's clear to me that the developers of this game care that what they're making isn't just a cheap cash grab on a console with few options in the multiplayer shooter genre, but instead a unique experience that deserves a spot in any shooter fan's library. They've already submitted patch 1.0.2, which addresses many of the issues I mentioned in this video. They also have a Discord server just so they can communicate with the people playing their game. Now, with the rest of this video, I'm going to describe the game's mechanics, weapons, abilities, and game modes for anyone who wants a more in-depth look at what this game has to offer, and it will serve a double purpose as a resource for beginners who just need help getting a grip on what everything in the game does. This is my Morphe, and this is an enemy Morphe. 
You can shoot at enemies to take their health and also to steal mass from the body part that you hit. You cannot steal mass from an enemy body part which is already at its minimum size. You also can't steal more mass from a body part when you already have that body part at maximum size. Shooting enemies will heal you, but only if you are stealing mass with your shots. So for example, if an enemy's legs are already as small as can be, you can't steal their leg mass. If your head is already at max size, you can't steal mass from any enemy heads. In both cases, you will still deal damage to body parts which you are not stealing mass from, but those shots will not heal you. Your Morphe comes equipped with a butt rocket that you can activate by holding down the jump button. Using the butt rocket uses up its fuel as indicated by the meter to the left of your Morphe. The butt rocket recharges whenever it is not in use. Once you're high up in the air, you can crash down next to enemies to create a shockwave that will blow them away from your landing spot. I've never landed on anyone before, but maybe you can crush your enemies too. Give it a shot and let us know if it worked. There are certain map elements that you can only use when you're the right size. There are tubes that transfer you to different parts of the map and cannons that you can enter to launch yourself through the sky. If a map element has a gray X over it, then you're too big to use it. When your Morphe is tiny, some firing modes will also throw you backwards. I first witnessed this with the bazooka attachment, but I also noticed this happening with the shotgun. There are five base weapons in the game. Each one is basically just a different weapon archetype. The first weapon you get is called the Rattata. The first weapon you get is called the Ratata, and it's fully automatic. The Kaboom is a shotgun. The Hotshot is a single shot weapon. The Burst fires a burst, obviously. The Pew Pew is the latest advance in enemy sizzling technology. I have no idea what that means, but I'm guessing that it's a submachine gun. There are nine secondary weapon attachments, which you can apply to any of the base weapons. You can save up to four combinations at a time, and you can switch between them in the middle of a game whenever you are at your base. There's the Pentazooka, which fires five consecutive rockets. The Slippery Splat, which shoots oil onto the ground which you can swim through to refill your ink. The Slippery Splat, which shoots oil onto the ground that will heal you and speed up allies while they are standing on it, and cause any enemies who walk over it to slip in whatever direction they were walking in when they touched it. Jump to regain control of your Morphe when this is happening to you. The Buzz Ball shoots a ball of electricity through the air which slows enemies that get close to it. The Scope Pope gives you a charged sniper shot. The Expando 9000 will shoot expanding foam obstacles that you can use to block passages or to cut off a line of sight. El Zappo lets you channel your hate into a short ranged lightning attack and is useful for taking out enemy foam made by that Expando 9000. The Sonic Punch will launch players away. The Vicious Vortex creates a vortex that damages enemies and absorbs projectiles, and the Big Bang makes a huge explosion. I apologize for not having footage of all of the weapons in action, but I haven't unlocked them all myself yet and there are some things I still haven't gotten recordings of even in bot matches. Each body part has a perk and special ability associated with it that gets stronger the more mass you have for that part. You can only have one special ability or plugin equipped, which you choose at the start of a match. No matter what plugin you are using, you will still benefit from the perks that you get from getting mass in the different parts of your body. So for example, if you have the chest plugin equipped, getting chest mass will make that plugin stronger and also increase the effectiveness of the chest perk, and gaining leg mass will only increase the effectiveness of the leg perk. And now, here's a list of the perks and plugins and the body parts they go with. Chest mass will increase your health pool, Hand mass will increase your main weapon's firing rate. The size of your right arm determines how much kickback you take from using your weapons and abilities. Left arm size affects the recharge time of your secondary weapon, but on the Morphe's Law website, it says that it increases the strength of your shockwave when landing from high places. Butt mass increases the strength of your butt rocket. Foot mass increases the strength of your kicks. Like I said, I've never landed on anybody before or even touched an enemy with my foot, so I'm not sure if doing that deals damage, but if it does, then that's probably what this is referring to. Head mass will increase the recharge rate of your ultimorphs, more on ultimorphs later, and leg mass lets you jump higher. The chest plugin is the discomfort zone. It creates a bubble that stops all friendly and enemy projectiles going in or out, and slows down enemies inside. Increasing your chest mass will increase the size and duration of the bubble, and also enhance the slow. 
The hand plugin is Sticky Hand. It acts as a grappling hook and can also stun enemies that you hit with it. Gaining hand mass will increase the distance it travels and the duration of the stun effect. The right arm plugin is Share the Pain. Activate it to start spinning around and shoot at enemies in range. Right arm mass will increase the duration and rate of fire of the ability and increase the amount of health you regenerate from stealing mass. The left arm plugin is Share the Love. Activate this ability to heal allies near you. The ability description says that it will top off their oil reserves, which I think might be referring to the butt rocket fuel. Left arm mass will increase the range, duration, and strength of the heal. The butt plugin is a fart. Activate it to stun enemies around you. Gaining butt mass will make the fart cloud bigger and increase the duration of the stun. The foot plugin is Drill Sergeant. Activating it allows you to sink into the ground and drill for a short distance. Pop up on an enemy to stun them. Foot mass will give you more travel distance and increase the duration of the stun. Cranial Impact is the head plugin. Use it to charge headfirst into enemies dealing damage and hitting them away. Head mass will increase the damage, area of impact, and distance enemies are knocked away. Finally, the leg plugin is Rock and Roll. It will turn you into an invincible ball that can roll into enemies to stun them. Gaining leg mass will increase your roll speed and, you guessed it, increase the stun duration. Whew, that was a lot of information, and we're not done yet, but we're going to take a break here. You can click ahead to the time marked on the screen to skip this break where I talk about my YouTube channel. I just want to thank the few of you who watched my Splatoon 2 video. If you missed it, I'll leave a link in the description. That video and this one both took a lot of time and effort to make, and I loved every second because I love video games and making videos. My goal is to create videos that are enjoyable for viewers, so I'd appreciate it if you could take time to leave me some feedback or just let me know what games you want me to cover. Right now, the only console I have is the Nintendo Switch, so let's keep all the game suggestions on that console, but I will read and consider suggestions of all types. Okay, back to Morphe's Law. Currently, there are three games in Morphe's Law. The most basic one is Morph Match, where each team competes to steal the most mass from the enemy. The amount of mass collected for each team is indicated by the colored bars going across the top of the screen. At the end of the game, each team's giant avatar will represent how much mass the team has. The bigger avatar will then dispatch the enemy avatar. In Headhunt, both teams' avatars are headless. Remedy this by finding the one spare head on the map and bringing it back to your avatar. The more mass your Morphe has, the faster you can move while holding the head. Getting shot at will make you drop the head. Once your avatar has its head back, it will defeat the enemy avatar. Mass Heist is the most complicated of the three, and it goes like this. All Morphes spawn with the minimum mass, and the goal is to steal mass from the enemy avatar, then transfer that mass to your own avatar. The only way to steal mass from the enemy avatar is to lower the avatar's shield, then shoot at it. You can lower the enemy avatar's shield by standing on the buttons scattered around the map. At any given moment, there is only one mass altar active where you can donate the mass you've collected to your avatar, and the location of the active mass altar will continue to change. The end of this game mode goes like the end of Morph Match. The bigger avatar always wins. I mentioned earlier that gaining head mass will increase the charge rate of Ultimorphs. But what are Ultimorphs? They are basically your ultimate ability. As far as I know, right now there are only two Ultimorph abilities, and you can choose which one you want to use right there in the moment. Activating your Ultimorph ability will allow you to take control of your team's avatar to either throw down an energy ray that slows down enemies near it and instantly kills enemies who touch it, or to throw down a dome that heals allies and increases their fire rate while inside. The energy ray and the dome can both be slowly moved around, kind of like the Stingray special in Splatoon. When you're using your Ultimorph ability, your Morphe will stay wherever it is in the battlefield, so make sure you get to a safe position before you activate it. Alright folks, that's all I've got. Leave a like if you found any of this information useful, subscribe if you like my content, and follow me on Twitter to get even more updates. Okay, bye!